All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Another uh, another Sunday evening training. Always excited to be with you guys. The energy that you bring me is, uh, is, is such a gift in my life, and I hope you know that. I hope you know that, um, you know, when you, at some point, if you decide to keep going, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll get to a place where you've been doing this as long as I've been doing it, and I've been doing this a long time. And what keeps you going is the stories, the stories of people making life-changing money, the people, the stories of people having these products impacted the, their lives in a huge way, the stories of people who, you know, who, 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 who it's just starting to click into gear for right now. You know, I see some of the names that are in the chat box, you know, some of the people who didn't, maybe didn't start the fastest, but now they're starting to figure some things out, right? Like it's the stories that keep us in the game. And, uh, it's the stories that we've constantly got to be sharing and telling the people. Uh, so here's what I want to here's what I want to really talk about tonight is there's I, I talk a lot about discipline. We talk a lot about discipline in terms of doing your best to follow the system, principles, things like that. But one of the things I want to kind of bring to everyone's awareness, and it was brought to my attention as a request to talk about today, um, was that when there's a lot of excitement and when there's a lot of um, growth happening it's easy to become consumed by the business. It's easy to be consumed by the business. It's easy to spend every second of every day working on the business. And when we spend all of our time working on the business, our household can suffer. And Eden and I would rather you have a thriving personal relationship with yourself a thriving personal relationship with your family members, a thriving personal relationship with your significant other or partner. Kaya and Roger, stop showing off, okay? You guys just, just stop showing off, okay? We got it. We understand. You love each other. You're happy. Yay. Okay, wonderful. Great. Gosh, show offs. Okay, no. But um, we love that, right? But, but what happens is we get so excited about what's happening in our, in our new world that we stop paying attention to our most important world. And one of the challenges is that the company becomes the other man or the other woman in our lives. And the challenge with that, of course, is then if you're doing this with a partner, if you're doing this with family members or whatever, they start to feel excluded and they feel like well the business is more important and then we have a problem because then we think well no no no, i'm doing the business for us why don't you see that and why don't you appreciate that and what they might want is just an hour of your time what they might want is just to have dinner with no phone at the table what they might want is to have some time in the morning before the calls before the texts, before the facebook posts and so you know Here's what I want. I want all of you to be here for as long as you wanna be here. And I want all of you to have sustainable, successful businesses for as long as possible. But what I know is that if the foundation in your home isn't solid, then your business is only gonna take you so far. And I've seen it time and time again, year after year, where people either grow together or they grow apart. And the reason that they tend to grow apart is because one person takes big action. It might illuminate some things in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the family, in the relationship, and that's okay. But more often than not, one of the reasons that the other person doesn't come along is because they don't feel like there's a place for them to come along. And they don't feel like they're being included in the conversation. They don't feel like what they've done to contribute to your household is being appreciated or recognized. And that it's all about you and your business and your team and, our, and your recognition. And so I really want you, if you want this thing to last and you want the home to have harmony in it, in spite of all the chaos, then I really want you to remember this. And some of you have heard me talk about this over the last three years, and for some of you, it's new. And I want you to think like this. I want you to build your life, and I want you to build your business around your life. Kelly's nodding because she's heard me say this a thousand times. And you hear me say it, but it's not that easy to implement it. But that's why you have to have discipline. So when you go to build out your schedule, I want you to put into your schedule 6.30 a.m. and just use whatever times work for your family. 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. 
personal time. 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m., husband and wife, family time. 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., workout time. 9 a.m. to, 10, to, uh, to 11 a.m., 12 a.m., or 12 p.m., isogenics time. 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., lunch time. No phones, no work, no business. And this is just an idea, right? One o'clock to three o'clock, family walk time, hike time, laughter time, whatever. Four o'clock to five o'clock, isogenics time, business time, office hours. Six o'clock to seven o'clock, dinner time, family time. Seven o'clock to eight o'clock, homework time. Eight o'clock to nine o'clock, husband and wife time, wife and wife time, husband and husband time, husband and daughter, you know, husband and daughter time, father and daughter, father and son, whatever. Okay. And when you build your life and have your business go around your life, now the people in your life and fun is great. Family fun days. I love that. No screen days. We do those all the time. It's great. When you build this, what happens is the people in your life who maybe don't understand what it is that you're doing, now they look at it and they'll support you and they'll cheer you on. Why? Because they feel acknowledged and they feel like they matter. But if all that matters is the business, they're not going to support you. Because one of the reasons people don't support new business owners is they feel threatened by the new business. They're scared. Ah, oh, if they're very successful doing this, then what about us? What about me? The kids look at it and go, is mommy not going to be around anymore? The spouse looks at it and goes, am I going to lose my partner if she's successful? And so what do they do? Because they don't know how to communicate that fear, because they don't know how to communicate that uncertainty, they sabotage. And they literally will set bombs and set traps, consciously and unconsciously, to make sure to do their best for you not to succeed. That's why the story goes, if you put two crabs in a bucket, one crab will try and crawl out, and what will the other crab do? It'll try and pull it down. So when you build, your business, when you build your life and then build your business around your life, do you know what you do? You get rid of the bucket. You get rid of the bucket. That way you just have a couple crabs and crabs will do what they're gonna do and they'll walk around and they'll eat a little bit and they'll come together and they'll fight a little bit and they'll have fun a little bit, but they're just gonna be crabs. If you remove the barrier and if you remove what's making it difficult for the people in your life to support you, they're more likely to support you. So one of the things I really want you to take some time doing is take a step back and really structure your life in a way that feels good so you can get everything done, so you can be wildly effective and productive, but also you can create an environment in your home that feels harmonious. Now, is it always going to feel harmonious when you stick to your schedule, when you have kids time and all that stuff? Of course not. Does this mean that you and your partner are going to stop having arguments and things like that? Of course not. But they'll become less and less and less and less because the partner and the family is involved in the process. Now, if you're not in a situation where you have a partner or family who's working with you and you're doing this and, you're, and, you're, and, you're, and maybe you're, you're, you're riding so low, all the more reason. Because if you don't take time for yourself, you'll lose yourself in this. And when you lose yourself in this because you're so obsessed with every little thing that's happening, guess what happens? That's when you're spending all your time scrolling on social media and comparing yourself to other people. That's when you're using coping mechanisms like alcohol and TV and, 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 and hanging out with people that aren't the best influence in your life as a way to escape all the pressure you're putting on yourself by being so consumed with growing your business. So there's a difference between being obsessive in the pursuit of your dreams and having an obsession that doesn't allow room for anything else to come into your life. You guys understand the difference in those two things? So there's a big difference between being obsessive, like I'm obsessive about transformation. I'm obsessive about growing this business. I'm obsessive about helping you all as much as I, maybe can, but it's not my obsession. I have other parts of my life that I value. I have other parts of my life that at times get to be a priority. And what I found in my own journey 
is that when I don't take time for me, and I'm just gonna be completely transparent with you all, because I always am, you know what happens when I don't take time for me, when I don't recharge, when I'm not structured in my day? You wanna know what happens? I resent you. I resent you. I resent our business. I resent Eden. And it has nothing to do with you, and it has nothing to do with isogenics, and it has nothing to do with Eden. It all has to do because I bottle up and I suppress how I'm feeling. And instead of giving myself the opportunity to rest and recover and have self-care and to do things that bring me joy outside of the business, I start to resent the business. Now I'm in a position in my life though, where I can have a day where I don't feel good about things and know that even if I take five days, it's not gonna affect my business. But you're all so new. So now is where you've got to learn to develop the discipline and the habits to take care of you and your family first. So that way you build a sustainable business. So that way when you do have days where your team members are pissing you off or you're frustrated at the company or whatever it is, you can take a day or two to go, go to the lake, go on a boat, go fishing, go play tennis, go for a hike, go horseback riding, go do the things that you love doing and you don't have to worry about what's going to happen in your business because you built a solid foundation. The problem is people put the business ahead of their lives, the resentment sets in, the business, because we know it takes some time to get it really up and running, we look at it, it's not paying us enough for the stress, and that's why people quit, because they look at it and they go, it's not worth it. But when you develop the habits early on, and you teach your team to develop the habits early on, to create an environment where the business feels good for the majority of the time, now people are bought into the process of it being okay to take a little bit of time to get it going because they're having fun doing it. Is that helpful? Type in the chat box. Let me know. Is this, is this, am, I, am, I, am I making any sense today? Okay. Sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I just start talking and I'm like, does it make sense? And Adele's looking at me like I'm a crazy person, but it's really because I have the beard still and she can't stand it, but that's a whole other conversation for another time. So I really look, one of the number one reasons I see people quit is because it stops being fun. It's one of the number one reasons people quit. It just stops being fun. And they look at their results and their results don't match what they think has been a really solid effort. And their family looks at their results and goes, this is worth it to you? us fighting all the time, you not spending time with the kids, that's worth it to you? It's worth it to you for 200 euros, really? Versus creating a culture in your own life and in your own family where your family's excited for you because you're excited for you because you're also expressing excitement for them and their lives and what they have going on. See, the relationships in your life are what matter the most. The money, the success, the recognition, all of that is. That's just fuel to enhance life. I've had money and I've been broke. I've been in loving relationships, I've been in toxic relationships. I've had great friendships, I've had horrible friendships. But here's what I can tell you. When you learn to discipline your lifestyle, and when you learn to set a standard of saying, here's what I value, and nothing's gonna get in the way of those values, when you start to make more money, all that happens is those values get exploited in the most positive, healthy way possible. How many of you have ever had the experience where you save up a bunch of money to go on a really nice date, or you save up a, nice, a bunch of money and you go on a little vacation? And the vacation's amazing and it's wonderful. And then by the time you get home, you haven't even walked in the door and you and your partner are fighting already. But what happened? We just had this amazing vacation. We saved all this money. It was all perfect. The foundation wasn't solid. And what people do is we use money and we use vacations and we use material items to cover up the parts of our lives, the parts of our relationships, the parts of ourselves that we don't necessarily want to look at. But when we're willing to look at those things and put structures in place, that's when life becomes more fulfilling. That's when life becomes more fun. That's when people look at what you're doing 
and your energy and your excitement and your relationships with your family, with your partners, with your kids. And they go, I want that. I want that. People, yes. Do people want the money that Eden and I have? Sure. But the thing that we get the feedback on the most, what they want the most, they want our connection. They want our ability to have deep conversations. They want the, 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 the amount of trust and honoring that we have in our household because that's what we've made a priority. So they look at our life and they go, yeah, the travel is great and the house is great and the money is great, but look how solid. That's what they want. And that's what I want for all of you because that's what's gonna attract people into this. What's gonna attract people into this is the overall lifestyle that you're creating, not just your weight loss, not just a great cleanse day, not just a detox challenge, not just an extra 500 or 5,000 euros or pounds a, a month. That might get them excited, but unconsciously, what are they really looking for in their lives? Harmony, trust, love, communication, peace of mind, great interpersonal relationships, community. That's what people are really looking for when they look at you. And so are you willing to put systems in place so that exactly, lifestyle, freedom, and vision, are you willing to put systems in place so that you can thrive as an individual, so that your family unit can thrive as a unit? Are you willing to take a step back and go, how am I spending my days? Am I always on my phone? Are we constantly talking about the business? Have I given up all of my other hobbies just to do this? Am I taking time to read books? Am I taking time to go to museums if I love art and culture when, when, they, when we're allowed to again, of course? Am I taking time to invest in the things that, that I'm doing this for in the first place? And it's tougher right now, of course. And, and be resourceful, find a way. Do something different, create new, create new habits, create new types of self-care, right? Watch interesting documentaries, challenge yourself to learn something new all the time. Eden, we have a, we have a test here. I would, I'm sure there's something similar in Europe and the UK. We have a test here called the, um, the SATs. It's the test you take to, to try and get into universities, right? You have to take a, a test to qualify for university here, right? Just like I'm sure they have there as well. And part of it is, Part of it is a language test and they have very difficult words. So what did Eden do the other day? Eden didn't graduate high school. So one of the things she's constantly thinking about is how can I improve my vocabulary? How can I improve how I speak? So she ordered a box of SAT cards, cards that are on the test. So what is she doing every day now? Spend 10 minutes learning a couple of new words. It's not exciting. It's not like the most amazing outdoor experience ever, of course, but it's just the willingness to use her time in a way that's fulfilling and not avoiding. Using your time in a way that's fulfilling and not avoiding. You've got to have those agreements with yourselves, with your family members, with your partners. You got to have those agreements because if you don't, I promise you, I promise you, eventually they will grow to resent the business. Then they'll grow to resent you. Then you'll grow to resent them then you'll grow to resent the business. And then guess whose fault it is? It's my fault, it's Eden's fault, it's network marketing's fault, right? It's everyone's fault. No one ever told me this. Guess what? We're telling you this, loud and clear. Build your life, build your business around your life. It becomes more fun, it becomes more fluid, and it becomes way, way more attractive. Way more attractive. And the other thing it does, I promise you, if you're good about it, it takes you out of comparison because you know, okay, 11 to one is my business time and I'm just focused on business and I'm gonna be 100% effective in that time. And the rest of your time, you're spent doing things that you love. And when you're spending time doing things that you love, you don't have time to pay attention to everything else that's going on around you. But when you just are on your phone all day, and you're not really being productive, and you're not really being effective, Oh, there they go again. There they go again. There. Oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Oh, bah, 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 bah. It's all because 
you're not creating an environment that's setting yourself up to win. And life becomes easier when we create systems and structures and they don't have to be rigid. It doesn't have to be hardcore, right? I'm not like a hardcore schedule person. I'm not, that's not me. But I have a structure in place that sets me up for success. And so that's the other thing I want you to look at is when you look at your daily schedule, when you look at your weekly schedule, when you look at your activities, when you look at your habits, just stop and ask yourself the question, is this setting me up for success? If it is, great, do it. And if it's not, get rid of it. You know, I'll give a personal example. For example, uh, we don't really keep alcohol in our house. And the reason we don't keep alcohol in our house isn't because I would drink all the alcohol. It's because if I have one drink, I risk feeling severely hung over the next day just because of my body interacts with alcohol. Does that mean I'll never have a drink? Of course not. I have a, I've had cocktails and beers with plenty of you, right? Will I have a drink or two? I will, but I'll only do it if I know that the very next day I have nothing to do because I know it can affect me mentally. I know it can affect me physically. So that's why I don't keep it in the house because I'd rather put myself in a position to feel good as often as possible so I can do what I love with an enthusiasm and attitude and an aptitude that keeps me moving forward as opposed to feeling like I'm dragging myself through the mud every single day. So what are your habits? What are your structures? And are you willing to create an environment that's supportive for everyone in your household so that this can feel good the majority of the time? Not all the time. I'd be lying to you if I said it's gonna feel good all the time, it's not. It's not all flowers and cotton candy all the time. It's not, we have rough patches, we have hard days, but if you can create an environment where 90% of your life, 95% of your life, 97% of your life feels good, wouldn't you agree that that would be worth it? I think so. And it starts in the household. It starts in the household and it starts with setting ourselves up for success. So I don't have any big finish. I'm gonna post in the chat, I'm gonna post in the group, what did you learn? I hope you guys have an enjoyable evening. Adele, I hope you have a very, very vivid dream of my, of my face just being shaved down perfectly and you sleep well and you don't have any more nightmares from this thing. I hope that happens for you. But um, sending you all of, all, of, all of our love from the States. Congratulations again on another massive, massive week. You guys are leading the company. You're leading the community. You guys are phenomenal. You're the best. We love you. We appreciate you. We're grateful for you. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you all. Bye.